and uh, I hope we are ready to start uh, our discussion. We are glad to welcome you as members of Science and Education Working Group of for Civil Bricks. We are all ready to share our experience on the round table human development after pandemic COVID-19, the role of education and science. This year has been truly unique for Russian presidency in BRICS. And first of all, as a moderator of our conference, let me invite for a welcoming speech, Dr. Victoria Panova, co-chair of the Civil BRICS Forum, managing director of the Russian National Committee on BRICS Research, scientific supervisor of the BRICS Russia Expert Council, vice president for international relations of Farisan Federal University. Victoria, the floor is yours, please. Thank you so much, Professor Nisimov. It is uh, truly an honor, just let me start with this, uh, that you have agreed to uh, chair, to be a Russian co-chair of this working group. Uh, because uh, what many of us, those who, uh, myself from the inside more, but those who were observing the work of the, and the life of the Forest and Federal University saw you as an example of how uh, the head of such a big, uh, important institution should do. And also, uh, we also witness a lot of achievements that are recognized of, uh, as, uh, um, as such by wide international audience, but also inside the country. So uh, that is why uh, we believe your agreement is truly something that would allow us to come up with their uh, relevant recommendations that are to be further uh, delivered to their leaders of the five BRICS countries. Uh, let me uh, just, I won't use more than a couple of minutes uh, uh, I would like to tell you, uh, some of you are, uh, have been long with us and we're here in Russia during the previous Russia's chairmanship. Uh, the time of 2015, when we had their civil bricks process launched for the first time, and it was the Russian civil society and Russian academia that uh, introduced this format and it was very successful. And uh, if we look at their number of recommendations that were offered to the leaders as, as a result of their 2015 forum, civil forum, uh, we saw quite a few of those being developed further, uh, introduced into the official documents, both of leaders and official uh, ministerial levels. Uh, they're widely discussed by uh, relevant uh, ministries. Uh, expert tracks and are becoming a part of our everyday life activities uh, of BRICS cooperation. We also have a much more intensive and much more close cooperation network of all the five countries, those uh, over the past six years now. And I think this is uh, the civil forum is uh, really the foundation for such a uh, cooperation. Uh, Russia has undertaken its chairmanship since uh, January 1st of this year. It's been a difficult year. We've uh, started with a number of political crises uh, in the Middle East, uh, the fires in Australia, but now and now there uh, uh, then pandemics and, and ongoing turbulences. But uh, what is important, no matter what's happening, BRICS remains on each level, be it track one official, be it track two, what we have, what we are doing here, we remain a stabilizing force. And I think it is important that we remain to do the same. Uh, one of the outcomes of their interactions between academia and, uh, uh, and BRICS leaders and BRICS ministries was their launch of the BRICS Network University uh, we also have in their established BRICS STI, Science, Technology and Innovation Architecture. And um, I believe now we are in a position to suggest further bold moves to go much more beyond what officials can do and introduce some uh, new initiatives in order to make lives of our countries better 
to ensure that the young people, because it is primarily directed at the youngsters who would be forming our future, that uh, we can come up with ideas that would ensure their cooperation and also the well-being of our countries ahead of us. So uh, I wish you lots of luck for this uh, very important gathering, today's roundtable. I would, I would like to thank, thank once again uh, Professor Anissima for undertaking this extremely important role and uh, also uh, looking forward to not just to follow in this round table, but to seeing all their uh, initiatives and recommendations that would come up uh, as a result. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Nismi. Thank you, Victoria, for such a motivating speech for uh, all our participants. And uh, before we start, I would like to say a few words uh, at the opening as a president of, of Forreston Federal University. And I would like to say that I'm really delighted to welcome you all today at the ceremony of this discussion. And first of all, allow me to extend the appreciation to our partners and guests for coming. Thank you very much. I also would like to thank the BRICS Russia Expert Council for their support and great contribution uh, to the development of this project and active involvement in our mutual work throughout the Russian BRICS chairmanship this year. By the end of this round table, we are looking forward to reaching many fruitful results and also uh, we'll have a joint photo. So I ask all participants to stay with us all the round table. Now, we hope that our institutions will be able to create new sustainable forms of collaboration that will enhance the intensity and quality of scientific and educational expertise exchanged between our countries. Standing and the forefront of the world leading political institutions for global governance and corporations, BRICS has stepped into a new decade that has been marked by the worldwide outbreak of COVID-19. In the light of the world crisis, the full concentration and mobilization of all forces at different levels of society have become a necessity. Science and education were among the first to experience considerable challenges, including digitalization, rapid, rapid development of e-learning and online platforms to perform day-to-day -day tasks. After months of pandemic, it's undeniable that civil society and human capital are two ingredients for further progress and sustainable economic growth. Our university also gives a priority to sustain cooperation in the field of education and science. And I'm convinced that this round table will make a significant contribution, not only to the exchange of scientific and educational expertise, but will also generate friendly ties between our university and other Russian universities and all other participants of this event. Today, we celebrate the beginning of our joint activity for the better future for BRICS nations. However, I would like to underline that after today's discussions, we'll continue working distantly on a set of recommendations for the BRICS Civil Forum, as Victoria told, as an integral part of a scientific and educational working group. And we really appreciate your expert views and wide expertise in the field. Please feel free to join in shaping BRICS future with us. Before we proceed, let us remind you some basic rules to make our discussion fruitful. Uh, we have about two hours to uh, maintain this discussion. We have a great number of participants, colleagues, wanting to present and share their ideas. Please be punctual and we have five minutes for the report, three minutes for the message. We would really appreciate it if in the end of your speech, you could summarize the ideas and draw the recommendations for our joint document. The second point is that we will have two sessions with up to 15 minutes discussion after each, if you want. Please save your questions to the speakers for the discussion sessions. And we have in our chat that uh, we wait your questions for the speakers. We are welcome to leave the questions and commentaries. Please mention your occupation when you make a commentary or leave a message in the chat. Thus, we will get to know each other better. Thank you very much. And now we are ready to start and to open session one, science and education after the pandemic, a strategic dimension. And I gladly invite Professor 
Claudia Aparecida Marlere de Lima, Rector of Federal University of Ouro Preto, Brazil. Please, floor is yours. Professor, please switch on your mic. Claudia, please, uh, microphone, your microphone is off. Yes, great. Good morning, um, ladies and gentlemen. Warm greetings from the Federal University of Ouro Preto, the UFOP, in the state of Minas Gerais, Brazil. It is a pleasure to participate in this event uh, and I hope to contribute with some reflections. My name is Claudia Marlieri and I am director of Federal University of Ouro Preto. In the order to put it in context, I would like to quick introduce the Federal University of Ouro Preto. Cadê a... No, that's it. Our no, institution. Uh -huh. Our in in institution was created in 1969 from the union of two centennial schools, the School of Pharmacy and the School of Mines, located in Ouro Preto, the first city in Brazil to be considered cultural heritage by UNESCO. We have, we have a programs in all areas of knowledge. And um, we have um, uh, nowadays uh, around uh, 2000 undergraduate students in our academic community. 2,000 graduate students, 927 full-time professors, and uh, 725 administrative and technical staff. We have uh, three campi in Ouro Preto, Mariana, and João Malevade, and uh, 15 five undergraduate, and um, 16 doctorates, 25 master, 90. I'm so sorry, I had problems. I, I start in, in, in this slide. Nowadays, the academic community has 12,000 undergraduate students, around 2,000 2, 2, graduate students, 927 full-time professors, and 725 administrative and technical staff. We have three campi. Ouro Preto, in Ouro Preto City, Mariana City, and John Molevari City. We have uh, 55 uh, um, undergraduate, uh, 16 doctorates, and 25 masters, and uh, nine professional masters. Uh, UFOP's location is in the Ouro Preto, uh, state of Minas Gerais is near the capital of uh, Minas Gerais state named Belo Horizonte. 
Belo Horizonte, and we have uh, two camps uh, are located in Ouro Preto, two camps are uh, in Mariana, and one campus in João Levade. The situation of education science uh, since 2019. Considering today's topic, I would like to speak briefly about some actions of UFOP in face the pandemic. Before that, it must be said that the situation of cuts in education and science investment has been worsening after the beginning of this government. In addition, to the deepening of social economic problems, we began the first semester of 2020 with the COVID-19 pandemic. This year, the Brazilian public universities suffer and the call for help as well as health and the other sectors of Brazilian society. On the March, March 2020, the UFOP Council, among others of the public universities in Brazil, decided to suspend the academic semester for the face-to-face -face activities. This decision was assertive and responsible as it is up to the university to set an example that lives matter. matter. On the other hand, the pandemic has suddenly imposed the change in life, work, and socialization. The university had to reinvent itself to respond to internal and community demands from the region where it's located and the confrontation of COVID-19. Despite the suspension of classroom activities, the university did not stop. Researches and community projects continued. Also, the faculty and the administrative staff continued to work remotely. It was necessary to adapt faster than expected. Among the actions directly related to the community, we can highlight, 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 highlight. Highlighted, UFOP health professionals were and and are on the front line and undergoing training to serve the region where UFOP is located. Provision, provision of a laboratory. Um, to perform COVID. Co COVID-19 COVID exam in order to serve the region's population. The laboratory is part of the laboratory network of Ezequiel Dias Foundation of Minas Gerais State. Development of an oximeter, oximeter to remotely monitor patients with COVID-19. COVID Together, there are 18 research projects in different approaches of COVID-19, in some being developed in partnership with other institutions. In extension, in extension uh, is in work directly with the community. UFOP has 13 actions directly uh, relate to the pandemic in the areas of health, education, environment, human rights, work and technology, culture, among others. Communication actions on COVID-19 to inform the community were also intensified through TV, radio and social media. In undergraduate and graduate education, a collective proposal called the Special Emergency 
academic semester was developed classes uh, was developed. Class have been offered remotely as a possible alternative in this moment of social social isolation. A set of data were collected in order to obtain information on the social environment and the health condition of the students, as well as on their condition of access to, to the technology. The data collected has generated an inclusion policy with a guarantee of internet access, rent, acquisition or upgrade of computers to students of a socioeconomic vulnerability. In addition, we have been activities to the international students, um, search, such as online Portuguese language class and cultural activities. Unfortunately, uh, we still cannot say that in Brazil, the worst the pandemic has passed. More than a thousand people still die every day and the actions of government are not enough to change the situation. Even so, we have been discussing, evaluating scenarios and planning since March on how to return to face-to-face -to -face activities as soon as possible. It will be essential to adopt the biosafety protocols already indicated by the World Health Organization. The measures require but the budget cuts announced for 2021 make implementation impossible as well as a safe return to face-to-face -to -face activities. A cut of 18.2% in the Brazilian Federal University budget was announced for the next year. We understand that this cut does not allow university working. I believe that education, research, and international cooperation, especially among the BRICS countries, can contribute to overcome the pandemic and to face the challenges that arise. The university remains receptive to join actions and intends to continue contributing to society as it has been doing since the beginning of its history. Thank you very much for your attention. I remain available for future discussions and soon it will be possible to receive all of you at the Federal University of Ouro Preto. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Claudia Aparecida Margarida de Lima. And uh, let me invite the next speaker, a representative of Brazil. And it is Professor Josiana Muniz de Paiva Barcante, Prorector for Research, Federal University of Lavras. Dear colleague, please welcome. Yes, jo Josiana. Good morning. morning. Can you listen? I will share my presentation. Just a minute, please. Can you see my presentation? No, we can't see. Well, I would like to thank and say that I'm so happy to share a little of our experience in Federal University 
of Lavras is I will talk to you a little about uh, our experience to face COVID-19 and uh, the experience that we are sharing with the municipal government in uh, multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary management to face this pandemic and uh, in a way that the university can help the municipal government in the, the face this pandemic too. Well, well in this map, we can see that uh, we really were not prepared to face uh, a pandemic caused by a respiratory virus that have a uh, right velocity to spread and a high capacity to infect a lot of people in a short space of time. We are facing a great problem, a great health problem in all of the world. And, uh, oh my God. In Brazil, as in the rest of the world, we can see that uh, COVID-19 has emerged as one of these centuries major global health challenges. We can see that yesterday, this data is from yesterday, we can see that uh, more than 3 million confirmed cases in Brazil and more than 150,000 deaths from COVID in Brazil. Lavras, where Federal University of Lavras is located, is a small city located in the south of Minas Gerais state, in the southeast of Brazil. We have nowadays around uh, 50,000 students in our community, and uh, nowadays we are not in a face-to-face -face active. To the first thing that we have to do to face this pandemic was to question that I posted here. What can we do to face COVID-19 pandemic as a university located in the south of Minas Gerais state? And uh, after these questions, we decided to create a committee to discuss and to direct the actions of the university to face this health problem and to help in what can I do, what can we do to face this as a university. And the first thing that we have to think about was, sorry, that uh, is important more important than ever to find creative ways to continue engaging with each other and our local communities, not only the academic community, but, but uh, the local community of the municipal, of the Lavra city to face COVID-19, uh, sorry. Uh, so in this community, we have to integrate our actions to face this pandemic. The committee created by the university decided to stop face-to-face -face activities and uh, initiate uh, home office work to the professor, to the administrative community, and the students initiated uh, time to prepare to a new model that we named as emergency remote study where the students uh, have a lot of activities oriented students to do it at home and using digital media to face this moment with a support of our university. In this way, we have uh, a lot of students being supported with financial support to starting to use internet and digital meet by the way that we need to do it today. So to activities that we are doing 
in an integration with the municipal government. In this way, high education institutes are supporting local communities during the pandemic with uh, a wider framework work of cities responding in strategy to COVID. So in this way, universities are supporting the activities of the municipal government to face this problem in different ways. So university and its social responsibility. Partnership with municipal government to respond to real necessities of the local health system and the local education system. Our, uh, our professor and our students that are in remote activities develop a platform to a panel to give real time information to the Lavras community about the pandemic status of the disease in our city. So we have a lot of dates that are daily put on this platform to inform the community about what we are doing in the university and we, what we are doing in the municipal government. So we have a lot of information in real time to this community. In the scientific way, we are developing a lot of activities that uh, help the health professional that are working in the hospital in the different ways in our city. So we have research and the students that are working together to prepare and develop a new way of uh, help this person. Here we have a lot of face child that were developed in the university laboratory to be used by health professional in the hospital. It was a partnership with a lot of, uh, a lot of institutes that are contributing to do. Masks that are used in the hospital, sorry. Here, we have a disinfection chamber that was developed by our research in Federal University of Lavras. Here, a model of disinfection of the streets and the local commerce and the local establishments to avoid the rapid spread of the virus in the city. And uh, these actions are being important to give us a lot of data that uh, are being used as a material to research and publication of data that will be helpful to understand how these disinfections ways are used to limit the velocity of spread of the disease. Here we can see some of the products that are produced by our academic community that are being used to be given to the Lavras community, to students, to persons that are not in working because of the, the pandemic. So guaranteeing the security of alimentary security of this person. Here we can see we have uh, the opportunity to structurate a laboratory for molecular diagnostic by PCR that uh, we will start these activities in the next, next weeks. And uh, here we can see an emergency medical facility that was structured by the university in this partnership with municipal government to help the health system to face this pandemic with an uh, increase in the number of the beds and the ventilators to guarantee a best medical assistance to the infected person during this pandemic. In this new normal transformation, this opportunity to digital media helping us to continue 
our education mission. So the emergence remote student have been be used in our community with our students. And we have shared this experience to basic education. So we have uh, a partnership with the school of the municip Lavras, Muni Lavras City. And here you can see a lot of kits that has been used by child at home schooling. So the child of Lavras City is also have this model of emergence remote study to face the COVID in at home, guaranteeing security to their parents and the people that uh, share in the same house. Another action that we have the opportunity to create in the Federal University was two sites to guarantee telemedicine solution, transforming healthcare. So in these two sites, we have uh, our doctors of medical school and our medical students working every day, during all day, by telephone and by internet to give uh, information about the disease, to give uh, uh, orientation about uh, some signs of the disease and uh, indicating some actions that have to be used by them. And one of the most important action is the health education. We believe that uh, health education is an important way to give information to academic community and to local community about prevention, about the disease, about the orientations, about medical informations. So we are using different ways of social mobilization capacity building, mass and interpersonal communication, social media, radio. We created a radio program to give information to everyone interested in it. So we can give information about uh, science, about uh, the disease, about the prevention, orientation about uh, the community actives during the pandemic. And the uh, using health education, we are doing intervention using different methods and mixed methods. So with this partnership, we believe that uh, alone university and the government are strong, but uh, if, you, if we together, we are stronger. So we are doing our activities in this partnership with the government and the university to give the best method to face the COVID in this moment of pandemic. Thanks. Thank you very much, Professor Josiana Muniz de Paiva Barcante for your speech. And uh, also thank you for your students. We had a semester of students exchange programs and uh, a few students from your university stayed a semester, uh, this COVID semester in our Far Eastern Federal University. It was a great experience for us and for them also. And your students are great, thank you. We are really together, at, at, as you say. And thank now you. we are ready to move uh, to our Russian colleagues. And the next speaker is from Gimo University. Uh, I must say that today is uh, the birthday of uh, Gimo University Rector, uh, my good friend Anatoly Torkonov, and we congratulate him. It's uh, his 70th anniversary and wish him uh, everything good uh, in his life. And the representative from Russia is the, and the next speaker is a professor of the Department of International Relations and Russia's Foreign Policy of Gimo University, Professor Yuri Alexeyevich Dubinin. Uh, please, Yuri Alexeyevich, floor is yours. 
Юрий Алексеевич, проблемы со звуком. Проверьте микрофон, пожалуйста. Давайте попозже попробуем еще. Yes, we experience some sound problems there. Давайте попробуем следующего спикера, потому что там явно проблемы с микрофоном. Uh, Юрий Алексеевич, we will try speaker and please check, check, check your sound and we'll be back very soon. Uh, I'm sorry, colleagues, it's a technical problem, but uh, in COVID pandemic, it's not, not a big problem for us. We have <laughs> more serious problems, in fact. Now we switch to Indian view of education in pandemics and ask uh, Yuri Dubinin to check his uh, speakers and uh, his uh, sound problems. And now I would like to invite uh, our great partner of our university, of many universities in the world, uh, IMT Education Group and uh, Vice President of IMT Education Group, Professor Bhavna Kumar. Um, please, Professor Bhavna Kumar, have a speech, please, welcome. A very good evening to everybody from India. I'm very uh, proud and happy to be here amongst all of you representing my country, India, and of course, Amity Education Group, which is uh, a proud partner of uh, BRICS Nations. And uh, just recently, 18 students uh, had an exciting uh, hands-on experience at BRICS, which I don't know will then become possible, but they had a full semester abroad in Russia because of the collaborative ventures that uh, the BRICS nations have been developing. Mm, with reference to the education sector and the impact of uh, the COVID-19 at uh, Amity, we have always been inspired by the vision of our respective founder president, uh, Dr. Ashok K. Chauhan and our chancellor. So not a day was wasted before the classes became online. And in fact, uh, more innovative teaching practices have started to be adopted at the university. Forums like these, which possibly would have required so much of coordination to bring in the best of uh, experience, wisdom on such a round table uh, has become almost a, a, a daily affair uh, at the university. And the best part is that it is also being accessible to all the students, the other stakeholders who are getting to learn in a, in a wonderful manner. In fact, on the day of independence of our country, it was a proud moment when we could also open uh, and Dr. Panova kindly graced us on that occasion. Thank you so much for doing that. And uh, uh, that's just an example of how uh, we have been able to collaborate even amongst the challenging times that all of us are facing. There have been a lot of lessons along the way. Uh, and as an education group, uh, Amity Education Group, just to give a quick introduction for those uh, who might not be aware, uh, we have uh, international campuses uh, across the world. We offer education from kindergarten to higher education and representing the higher education sector, internationalization, collaborations, and best of teaching practices with wonderful partners like uh, the BRICS nations and PEPU where our students went recently has been always the vision of our founder president and chancellors. Uh, we have taken a lot of uh, initiatives to make sure that the change from the face-to-face -face learning for our students uh, and for the teachers uh, has not deferred them to partake of the learning in any kind of a way. So we have used uh, a lot of uh, technology platforms that have of course become accessible and have been improving along the way. But we have also had a lot of creature development programs. And I feel that uh, we miss, we absolutely miss having uh, the campus experience for our students, but engagements uh, have had to be adopted, have had to be taken along the way in a manner where it has become essential that uh, we, we share even more than we were doing uh, for the students and the community at large. With respect to our contribution to the society, Amity has not been far behind. A lot of our scientists and a lot of researchers have come up uh, and even students 
have come up with uh, so many um, innovative applications, including uh, gloves, including sanitizing equipments, including other scientific uh, techniques, where we feel that there is a longer way to go and uh, try to exchange best practices across BRICS, BRICS partners and be able to develop better scientific solutions in a better and efficient manner to tackle this pandemic, which is just possibly giving a glimpse of how anything can disrupt the world in such a huge manner. Amity has also been uh, instrumental in providing a lot of uh, uh, food packets. and for faculty, for participants, for collaborators and partners they call of us. Education possibly is one of the, the, the best investments for anybody at any age. And this time it becomes even, even more essential because uh, whether it is the education of how to tackle a pandemic, whether it is the education of how to be able to console somebody who may be going through, uh, 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 not be able to tackle, uh, the scenario, be feeling a little disturbed, how education of how to be able to come up with different ideas, with different practices, with the uh, different ways of adopt, uh, adoption, education and how to keep on building skills and trying to find solutions to whatever problems are being uh, shown uh, by the world, by the nature in this case, and by the world at large. So the role of educational institutions and uh, at Amity at large, and uh, I have been a proud member of Amity for the last 17 years now, uh, is even more so uh, very important. And that is where our strength with partnerships with BRICS nations comes into play. Collaboration is the second important thing. So if education it remains, uh, remains the reality of the day, and in fact, uh, takes in more and more of importance, uh, collaboration, and collaborative ideas gets even more of an importance according to us. It is, uh, it, it, is it, it was wonderful to see that our students could get an opportunity to uh, travel to Russia to learn best practices. But what if uh, there, there is that opportunity um, is restricted in these times? So the forums like these and such roundtables, we hope, will come up with uh, other engaging ways and with the, with, with the relationship that we enjoy with BRICS, uh, we'll we should be able to come up uh, with means and ways in which what we are experiencing and what we are developing in respective uh, areas in our respective countries and our respective universities are capable of being shared not only amongst the partners at at the group level but even more so with the young minds uh, uh, that that all of us are teaching so at amity we have worldwide uh, more than 175000 students across all our campuses and uh, netherlands of course we have started our schools but otherwise uh, the campus experience is has not been possible which is why um, uh, trying to give our students uh, the experience of being able to work with different countries uh, and with uh, nations who are possibly developing wonderful solutions and vice versa welcoming students from uh, from from uh, from big countries to uh, share, to come and experience what amity scientists researchers and management specialists and social scientists are trying to do in this uh, covid challenge would be a wonderful and a remarkable i think achievement uh, we have all seen that time has been saved in this in this covid uh, thing so the time that was uh, taken for for travel time that was taken for uh, uh, for for other engagements and and organizing such a roundtable like this, uh, we should first we should try and take some of these practices forward uh, into the new normal uh, as, as as well and try to come up with ideas where um, the virtual experience uh, can never replace the physical one. Uh, it will have to and have to be. Uh, it, it, it can, however, strengthen the, the physical and the, the on-ground experience that we have been offering in our universities to our students. And, and that is where uh, we need to, we need to uh, come up with how specifically the low-cost models of, uh, for the students who are not able to afford uh, actual travel abroad. 
So it is, uh, it, 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 it's good that countries and governments are offering scholarships for students to come and study. But what about the, the majority of the country, which is not able to, um, to pay that much of money and possibly go for some education outside? And that is where uh, the, the low cost pathways, where parts of the programs are possibly done there and part of their uh, done abroad, or uh, even more so, the virtual engagement, the digitization of, it, uh, of education should continue in a very, very positive manner uh, in a way that uh, the moment we are able to open our campuses and welcome students back, we should also look at models where uh, the virtual engagement with partner universities across the world uh, is also enhanced uh, in, in a meaningful manner. Students come together, faculty come together, scientists come together, and they share ideas not only in personal forums, but they are also able to, to come together and, and work together and uh, maybe organize competitions together, maybe uh, do code sharing together, have some hackathons together. And those kind of experiences, uh, which, uh, which we have now uh, learned to adopt because there was no other alternative, could possibly then uh, become a more, uh, much more engaging thing. Uh, uh, we, we also feel that uh, the digitization aspect has uh, brought in an angle of uh, how to be able to assess. And I think the government of India has taken a very good uh, innovative step. This is no better time uh, to launch the new education policy, which again is also and also advocating revolutionizing education in a, in a more meaningful manner. Um, all in all, in summary to my initial thoughts, and I would be happy to take in uh, some more uh, uh, questions or discuss based on the round of experience. Uh, the, the continuation of uh, education, the continuation of collaboration, wonderful opportunities in terms of being able to offer meaningful, more meaningful virtual internships, uh, better uh, models in terms of global study programs, global internships, and strengthening of research between nations will hold the key Mm, uh, as it has always done for a lifelong and a learning revolutionizing education uh, in across the world. Thank you for giving this opportunity for me to address the gap. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Bhavna Kumar. And uh, it was a great speech and uh, our collaboration also is very good. And uh, also uh, uh, your students from MIT University stayed at our BRICS semester in Far Eastern Federal University. And Yes. Uh, they are brilliant, brilliant students. Thank you for them, and I look forward when borders will and open. And we can and when we can send uh, our students to Amity University Group to share their experience, uh, also. And uh, uh, I was told that uh, the problem with the sound uh, of Yuri Dubinin is uh, continuing. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we switch to our next speaker. Uh, from China and for the Chinese perspective, we are glad to invite Professor Sun Hun Zhu, uh, President of Hebei North University. I kindly remind to all our speakers that we uh, ask to speak for five, six minutes uh, because we have lots of speakers today. Thank you very much, colleagues, and please, uh, Professor Sun Hun Zhu, floor is yours. Welcome. Professor, please switch on your mic. Uh, sound, please. Uh, microphone, please switch it on. Yes, yes. Respected presidents of university, professors, colleagues from BRICS, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everyone. On behalf of Hebei North University, I'm honored to have been invited to this round table conference, jointly organized by Russian Far Eastern Federal University and a support council of the Russian Federation Presidency in BRICS Association in 2020 and to make the following speech. Early this year, the sudden outbreak of COVID-19 caused a severe impact on the whole world and also posed a huge obstacle to international exchange of education. Since the outbreak of the epidemic, countries and universities have taken active and effective measures 
to deal with the epidemic. The driving to minimize the impact of the epidemic on international students and international exchange and cooperation. Kevin North University is a provincial undergraduate university and has a history of 96 years up till now. Focusing on the goal of building a modern, open, and distinctive high level application oriented university, implementing a full strategy of innovation driven, talent driven, characteristic development, opening up, and integration, and adhering to the philosophy of seeking virtue and truth in professional and practical. The school has become an important base for the cultivation of high-level talent and scientific and technology innovation and the three major industries of medicine, agriculture, and education in northwest of the Hebei province. Integrating and coordinating the development of a science engineering, agriculture, medicine, and liberal arts. Our university has formed a multidisciplinary professional system with medical science and agriculture as its advantages. At present, our university has 23,000 this is a hundred full-time students including 1,005 graduate students and 725 foreign students. The school adheres to the opening of strategy, strengthens international exchanges and cooperation, and actively carries out the Sino-Russian government scholarship program. The successful bid for 2022 Winter Olympic Games will bring great opportunities for the prosperity in the development of China's ice and snow sports and industry. This is a great significance to meet the diversified demands of the citizens for sports culture speed up the construction of a support power, accelerate the implementation of a national strategy of a healthy China and all people fitness. Zhang Jiakou, which is less than 200 kilometers from Beijing, is working with Beijing to host the 2022 Winter Olympics. It is a secret mission of the local universities to realize the economic and the social development of the region, which is served by development characterized by ice and snow industry. Our university has gradually set the characteristics of ice and snow as one of the sorts of the university's development in accordance with economic and social development characteristics of Zhang Jiakou. The COVID-19 caused a great impact on international exchange and cooperation for higher education all over the world. But at the same time, it also made us realize the importance of enhancing physical and information-based science education and provides an opportunity to improve and upgrade the traditional mode and framework of international cooperation among universities. International communication strategy in the post-academic area should be agile and the use of technology should be proactive rather than reactive. Universities and colleges should strengthen communication and information disclosure. Flexible bilateral and multilateral cooperation 
is an important means to fight against the epidemic. We should update the traditional education modes and means, refine the existing channels of teaching and research cooperation, and channels of interaction between teachers and students, and deepen the communication and connection among cooperative colleges. In the period full of challenges in future, based on its professional advantages, Kirby North University of China is willing to join hands together with Greek colleges and universities to further deepen international exchanges and cooperation, encourage and support each other, continue to work together on the basis of existing mutual trust and cooperation, build stronger bridges of communication and make new contributions to educational exchanges, mutual learning, and the development of a shared human civilization. Finally, I sincerely wish the drum people companies a complete success. I wish the educational cooperation among BRICS countries achieve beautiful results continually. Welcome to visit the Winter Olympic City of Hebei, China. Thank you all. Thank you very much, President Song Hunzhu, for your speech. Uh, and I remind all our participants that you can send your questions to our chat and uh, we'll have a special time for discussion after our sessions. And now, before uh, starting the next session, I have a new uh, information, a small surprise from our organizers. But before this surprise, I must ask uh, the last question about Professor Dubin, because we switched uh, our professor from Russia and we had not speech from Russia in this session. What is the situation with your microphone now, Yuri Alexeyevich? Can we hear you or we well, must let's, switch? let's try again. I don't know. Is, is it better now? Great, great. Ah, our, our, yeah. our attempt was good. So, Professor Yuri, okay, Yuri Dubin. You. Thank you. From Dimo. Yes, please, you are stage. Okay. We are ready. Oh, so once again, uh, good afternoon to everyone. We've just been ex experiencing a huge thunderstorm in Moscow with uh, rain and uh, thunder. And um, I'd like to share some ideas about uh, what I believe uh, is important to enhance in. Oh, gosh, it has gone somewhere. I'll come back to that. Um, so that we can do something about um, about um, our um, um, educational collaboration among the among the BRICS uh, BRICS nations. Um, can can we see it now? No. No, but I can share your presentation if you want. Yeah, yeah, uh, just okay. a second. Just a second. Yes, we can see. Please. Okay. Now, okay. So a few ideas. You see, unfortunately, as I've seen from the reports on um, the um, pro progress report of the uh, educational cooperation among the BRICS nations, I have seen for the, that for the past two years, uh, there have been uh, the uh, leaders of the educational um, establishment of the BRICS country haven't been meeting during the BRICS leaders sessions. That's why I believe we, we have to do something to um, to expand to expand to expand to expand um, the educational cooperation among the BRICS nations. Well, first of all, what I believe is important, we have to promote activities of the BRICS University League. League. It has not been it has been a little bit dormant for the, for the past time, and I I am sure that something can be done to make it more active, especially in this new time of the pandemic. Because uh, where I see these new opportunities 
I believe we can create more and, and exchange more online courses uh, among our universities so that we can share our educational experience, not only through the um, immediate contact, but also through the uh, activating the online um, facilities. Well, first, uh, second, of course, um, despite the, the pandemic, we have to find ways to provide facilities for implementing students and faculty academic mobility. I believe that academic mobility is one of the most important things that we have in talking about the cooperation in education. Personal exchanges, uh, personal experience is important both for the students and for the faculty. And here, I'm sure that we can gain, that we can gain a lot. Um, third, I believe we have to facilitate the inter-university cooperation within BRICS. And here, I believe, one of the most important thing is to introduce the dual degree diploma system within the BRICS University Leagues. Um, I think it's very important for us because we have a number of leading university among the um, academic, um, academic establishments of the BRICS countries. And here I think we can do a lot more than we have been doing so far. Oh, I have read about the, um, the fact that uh, the Moscow State University has opened a branch in somewhere in the southern regions of China. I'm not sure is it in uh, Guangzhou province or somewhere else, but uh, still uh, uh, in Guangdong province, I'm sorry, or somewhere else. But I think that's one of the ways. We can do a lot of the dual degree courses with such uh, important um, um, Indian University, for example, as Jawaharlal Nehru University, with such important Chinese University as the um, People's University of Beijing or Tsinghua University or the Fudan University of Shanghai. And uh, we can uh, add a lot among the uh, Russian universities, including the Far Eastern Federal University, the Moscow State University, the St. Petersburg State University, and so on and so forth. Um, besides, I believe it will be important, it will be useful for us to ensure some financial support from the BRICS International Development Bank to promote the BRICS Network University. Unless we have the real um, financial basis, we can't, uh, we can't achieve great results in our educational cooperation. I think that is very important to talk to the leaders of the BRICS country to um, engage the International Development Bank resources to promote scientific and educational cooperation. And um, finally, I think it's also very important, apart from that, to expand the cooperation between the educational establishments of the BRICS country. That I think will help us to gain a lot of new experiences um, we've been um, listening to the initiative of the, of the Far Eastern Federal um, University to invite uh, students from Brazil, India, China, and other countries to take part in this special semester, uh, special BRICS semester at the, uh, in Vladivostok. And I think that that can be um, enhanced more, um, not just by the such big um, establishments as the BRICS Federal University, but also by the medium size and small establishments of all the BRICS countries. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Yuri Alexeyevich, for your speech uh, and uh, for mentioning our university and our initiatives. I hope that it will be widened uh, further from our other our partner universities from other countries. And now we finish our uh, first session, and I would like to deliver uh, uh, a few words uh, to our uh, leader, for, to our uh, co-chair of the Civil Bricks Forum, uh, Victoria Panova. Uh, we have a small uh, surprise to all our participants, and please, Victoria, say these words. 
Thank you, Professor Anis. We're not that much surprised. Uh, we just initially uh, planned to have a, a photo op at their very end, but it seems uh, reasonable to have pictures taken uh, in the middle so that we celebrate the peak of their uh, development. So please uh, turn everybody who is participating in the Zoom online discussion, turn your cameras on and our uh, uh, our, our team would do their beautiful pictures that would uh, later on could be used both for your uh, press releases and for our official site. Uh, and also without uh, kind of moving around too much, I would like to say that our next session would be moderated um, by our Brazilian colleague. We, uh, for this um, group, we have a a co-chair from Brazil, uh, Dr. Rui Vicente Opperman, who is the rector of Universidade Federal do Rio Grande do Sul. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, he's on a meeting with the minister at the moment. Uh, but fortunately, we do have his right hand, uh, Dr. Nicholas Maillard, Dean of International Affairs of this university, who would be uh, really happy, hopefully, and also eligible to take the word and to continue moderating the discussion after that. And uh, uh, so now, please, everybody, turn on your cameras. And uh, I would like our team to ask to make the gallery view so that I'm not the only one on their screen and that we can have a uh, beautiful picture. Uh, yes, we have a gallery screen, so I I see almost everyone. Um, yeah, we have, yes, I yes, think we have one more person to turn on the screen if possible. Perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. So please say bricks. <laughs> Just one, two, three, bricks. Bricks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That's perfect. perfect. Thank you, Dr. Anisimov. Uh, I'm, I'm not leaving and uh, obviously you're not, but uh, we're having uh, Nicholas Pinera talking to us. Okay, well. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for, for the presence. And uh, so my name is Nicola Maillard, as has just been uh, mentioned. Uh, and uh, I represent the rector, so Rui Vicente Opperman from Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody for this second session. The topic is Digital World Successful Practices. And uh, the topic, of course, is especially relevant due to the COVID pandemic. but. Uh, as has already been mentioned in the previous speeches, uh, this question of digital world, digital communication, virtualization goes way beyond the virus. Uh, it's a society evolution towards more virtual communication. It's a challenge for the universities because uh, basically everybody from wherever in the world uh, is now able to access knowledge. So as university, we, we of course are, are challenged to, to redesign ourselves to provide this knowledge to everybody from wherever they, they come. And of course also, uh, certainly the BRICS countries are leading uh, powers in terms of IT and, and communication. China, of course, India, of course, Russia, of course, are leading countries in terms of, of uh, engineering uh, for software, uh, technology, and so on and so forth. So it's certainly a topic which is at the heart of the, of the common activities and research that we can do in our universities. So certainly inside the BRICS League, inside the BRICS Network University, there's a lot to, to do on this field of, uh, of digital world. So uh, without further ado, uh, I'd like to start uh, with the speeches. I, in my role of moderator, I need to remind everybody that we, you have five minutes at most for your communication, because as in the previous session, we have many speakers planned. So I will kindly ask everybody to, to fit in this slot of, of five minutes. And uh, so to start with, uh, I think the first speaker would be Professor Antonio Claudio Lucas de Nobrega, 
rector of uh, Universidade Federal Fluminense, which is from Brazil. So I'm especially glad to start with the Brazilian University from Rio de Janeiro. Uh, Reitor Antonio de Nobrega, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Nicolas. Thank you uh, also to the organizing committee for uh, having my, my participation in this very important meeting. Uh, I would like to share my screen with you. I'm, uh, let me check if uh, it's going to work. Okay, can you can you see my screen? Yes, please continue. Perfectly well. Okay, so uh, I'll stick to my five minutes time frame. Uh, I'll, I'll do uh, a transition from the first panel to the second one. Uh, so we are dealing with science and education after the pandemic, a strategic dimension. Uh, the, the, the meeting itself presents us with uh, this five axles uh, approach to the pandemic uh, concerning the impact on society. And, uh, and these uh, axles will be knowledge and economy, universal management in a pandemic, scientific collaboration, academic exchange, innovative methods in education. Uh, we don't have time to go through all these specific issues, but uh, given this context, I would like to bring back uh, the reasons that uh, make us uh, similar, uh, at least to bring back the, the factors that uh, make us the bricks. Uh, and, and I understand that all crises are an opportunity as well. So, um, of course, this is not all of the issues that uh, bond us together, but specifically we have common challenges, the territorial extension, large populations, social inequalities, uh, environmental sustainability, economy and development. So we have the opportunity uh, to collaborate in, in, in different ways, specifically dealing with these five uh, uh, you know, common challenge to, to, to the countries that uh, uh, make us call the BRICS. But more specifically, uh, I'd like to, to deal with uh, the remote interaction. Uh, the, the remote interaction has been used by all of us throughout the years. Uh, what happened is that uh, nowadays we are just have to move a step forward and a remote interaction uh, uh, went all the way from just a complementary way of interacting to the mainframe. Uh, the, the, this meeting is a very, very good example of what I'm trying to say. You don't need to go to other people's country. We are just interacting through the internet. This is a big change. Although it was, it was already taking part of our lives, now remote interaction became the way to interact. So this is really important because it will become uh, stronger and stronger, the, if not the unique, the most important way of interaction, uh, dealing with scientific collaboration, academic endeavors, cultural exchange, and administrative uh, experience exchange. So uh, remote interaction will become more and more the way to interact, the main way of interacting. But uh, given the timing restraints, I would like to finish or to bring on, and to give a specific contribution to this discussion, not only to the digital uh, ways of interacting or in terms of our university mission, but I would like to point out what I call the human factor. Uh, even if we talk about digital uh, means to, to work together, it's really important to remember that all the specific stressful situation, when you all go through a traumatic uh, experience, we go through five different stages, the denial, anger, bargain, depression, acceptance. So it's really important, no matter what method we use to interact, no matter the planning, uh, what the plannings are for uh, we uh, collaborate, we always have to remember that human beings go through five different phases when they uh, face a very stressful situation, such, such as the pandemic we are going through. 
denial, anger, bargain, depression, acceptance. And it's really important to understand that when we deal with people, uh, different people go through uh, these stages at a different pace, at a different timing. So when we plan, when we uh, organize our collaborations, we have to remember that our community are going through these phases at different stages. And please remember that all, and also the, the, the countries have been hit, has been hit by the pandemic at the different stages. So we have to remember that when we interact uh, among the countries and also when we uh, plan to uh, put forward some initiatives within our countries, we have to remember that people may be still on the denial phase and others may be already accepting the new uh, life we're going through. So with that, uh, I'd like to, to thank again the organizing committee for having me here. And I hope I had brought uh, a contribution to the discussion that's the human factor uh, that's really important to remember when we plan and when, when we interact. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Antonio. Certainly your contribution has been much valued and is highly, highly interesting. Uh, we'll keep on with another Brazilian university, another Brazilian representative. Uh, it will now be Dr. Laís Forti Thomas from Federal University of Goiás, uh, who is going to, to present her views on the situation and on the digital world. Laís, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Professor Allard. Um, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Laís Thomas. And I'm here on behalf of Professor Edivar Madureira, Rector of the Federal of Goiás. Uh, I'd like to thank you for inviting me and to say that it's an honor to be here. UFG was created in 1960 and we are located in the heart of Brazil, exactly in the Midwest region in the state of Goiás. The main campus is located in Goiânia, a city very close to Brasilia, the capital of Brazil. We also have four campuses. Our courses, our courses are related to all areas of knowledge and we have 98 undergrad courses for e-learning undergrad courses, 62 master's degree programs and 43 doctoral degree programs. I'm proud to say that UFG is a university that has a quota system for students who have had elementary education in public schools and are from low-income uh, families. Uh, there are also quotes for Black, Indigenous and Quilombolas students. We have been cooperating with a lot of institutions all over the world, as you can see in the map. The current situation resulting from a COVID-19 pandemic demands efforts never imagined by education and science. The whole of Federal University of Goiás is to foster research and studies that seek to support public policies for the emerging situation based on best international practices. The researchers, these researchers can also collaborate in the production of tests and vaccines to assist in achieving the cure for this pandemic. I want to show you some of the UFG initiatives. Professor Cristina Toscano is the only Brazilian and the initial representative of Latin America who is part of the strategic advisory group of specialists in vaccine and vaccination of the WHO. Professors Gabriela Rodriguez and Elisangela Lacerda have developed a new rapid test. In addition, the university must be prepared to serve its community with the implementation of remote teaching techniques and training that supports human development in the post pandemic moment. These times when it's mandatory to stay at home uh, and use remote teaching methods, we can identify challenges to basic technology access, like lack of high-speed internet at home, lack of learning devices, computers, uh, cell phones, difficulties with the new online methodologies. Some of the implemented solutions are 
mobile connective plan for low income students, donation of devices driven by UFG alumni association and others, training uh, and teaching training online and offline promoted by our uh, e-learning center and the identification of special needs. We just launched an ebook with didactic pedagogical guidelines for the organization of remote teaching, as you can see in this slide. The digital tools that we are using in this process, for example, are um, Moodle, G Tweet for Education, WhatsApp, Telegram, Teletender. And also Turing platform developed by Informatics Institute of uh, Federal University of Goiás. This institute also has an extensive program called Digital Education that has been implemented since 2018 in partnership with the Faculty of Education. The purpose of this program is to promote digital education training to our outsourced works, especially the cleaning staff. This project has been giving support for our whole community using, uh, during difficult times, uh, even like high school teachers and elementary school teachers too. We are proud to say that UFG just launched a new course about artificial intelligence, the first one in our state. And my last words are global development must pay attention to the sustainable development goals and to the 2030 agenda that fosters action that are capable of reducing inequalities. This debate must be supported by human security and empowerment. By Shola Spasiba, Sheshe, thank you all. Uh, it was a great pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much, Lais. It just occurred to me that maybe one, one technical topic uh, that we, we should tackle in this group is uh, the digital tools that would be common to our countries. Uh, Thais mentioned WhatsApp, for instance, that we're, we're using a lot in Brazil, but of course, social networks in China are based on different tools. And in Russia and in India, probably there are other protocols and, and, and tools also available. So maybe among our five countries, at some point, we should think about one common uh, technological solution for, for MOOCs or for interactions among our universities. Uh, the time is now to, to listen from some representatives from some other countries in Brazil, and specifically, we'll go to Russia. Uh, I'd like to welcome Professor Alexei Malev, Vice Rector for International Programs and Digital Innovation, Russia at Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. I've had the chance to visit MIPT in 2014, and I've been very impressed by, <laughs> by, uh, by the, the success that, that you have. So I'm sure this presentation will be also very mind opening regarding the possibilities in digital age. Professor Hello. Malev, please. Hello for everybody. Thank you, Nicholas, for such a warm introduction. So let me show, demonstrate my screen. Uh, I think here we are. So I would like uh, to say once more, hello, nice to participate in such conference. Uh, and uh, I, Fully agree with the previous uh, speakers, with Professor Antonio, Dr. Lais, and uh, um, I think all of us should somehow transform our educational process to digital formats, to digital uh, forms, remote forms. Uh, but let me focus on one of, of them, one of our initiatives that we started in uh, last day of February in the high level or the first day, days of pandemic in Russia. And it named uh, Festival of Artificial Intelligence and Competitive Program, Rook Code Festival. We, we switch every, all initiatives uh, 
switched uh, online. Uh, and uh, we have uh, some interesting or wonderful results, uh, uh, amazing results um, that more than 12,000, uh, not only students, but uh, people from age from 10 to 50 uh, uh, participated in this initiative. And I think in their advantages of remote or digital formats, uh, they we started only from Russia. We use a Russian language and uh, from 80 different Russian regions. Uh, for information, we have 85 totally in uh, Russia. They participated in this uh, uh, first online course, Quick Start in Competitive Programming. Uh, after that, uh, there were some qualifying and interactive intensive courses in two uh, divisions, artificial intelligence and uh, uh, competitive programming. And everything is finished, not for ordinary exams, but for competitions. So we changed uh, exams for to competitions in, uh, uh, in these fields. And I think it one of the alternatives how we could uh, measure the results of our students. Uh, I would like to say one more thanks for um, Far East Russian Federal University. And uh, you could see here all our partners. So it was a, a network uh, initiative from different uh, universities in Russia. And uh, let me just add that we, this week, uh, sorry, next week, the 31st of August, we announce and start the next, the second uh, festival, and it will be international. Our colleagues from neighbor countries uh, uh, added here, uh, but uh, we will translate some uh, programs in English. For example, we already done it for, uh, for last uh, um, uh, for last championship uh, that was 26 of April 2020. So we translate all our uh, problems and all our score tables in English and participated people from you could see here 58 different countries. So we invite everybody, your students, your alumni, or in some schools from your regionals to part participate in. And this year we will start not only for the um, basis for competitive programming, but as well we are starting a new course for artificial intelligence named Quick Start in the Artificial Intelligence. Uh, and um, it's some um, new for, for this initiative. Here you could find uh, some information about qualifying rounds, uh, about intensive course, but uh, let me one more say that we use uh, some platforms like Zoom format or uh, some uh, chats in uh, WhatsApp or other uh, special uh, platforms. And during the pandemic, when we are all uh, should or communicate remotely. We uh, develop not the culture of a real communication, but the culture of a remote communication for our students. And uh, we have a increase we a, a lot of a lot of uh, messages in chat. The number increased dramatically uh, in comparison with our, our ordinary life in a previous year. Uh, Usually we provide for a last competition, 11 or 12 tasks, somebody wins. Uh, and uh, I hope it will help your students to uh, have uh, some more experience in such uh, IT technologies, maybe for your future engineers, but not only for managers and even for uh, people who are very more close for arts but we know that in you know, modern life, uh, art as well use uh, some approaches from artificial intelligence. Thank you for your attention. There is my contacts and I will be glad to 
to answer your emails. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you, Alexei. Uh, it's always quite impressive to see how much Russia is involved in, in programming and in programming competitions. I remember an initiative from ITMO in St. Petersburg, which had had a great success also, and had led to collaborations with Brazilian universities. Some of our students had taken classes and, and prepared the challenges together with the Russian counterparts. Uh, let's move on to China now. The next speaker will be Dr. Li Jin uh, from Drama and Theatre Research Institute, so different topic, from the Chinese National Academy of Arts. Uh, please, Dr. Li Jin, you can take the floor. Yes, hello everyone. Uh, this is Li Jin, and uh, can you hear me all? All Perfect the people one. can hear me. Yeah, thank you very much. And, uh, as long as everybody introduced them, the campus and uh, their, you know, the universities. Uh, I from the CNNA. CNNA is uh, is called the Chinese National Academy of Arts, and uh, our 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 school, our academy only take uh, postgraduate student like the uh, master and the the doctor. And we, we don't we don't take uh, undergraduate student and uh, so uh, but you know our my my uh, school is is something like the quite higher but uh, something like that and uh, now I'm gonna share my uh, presentation if everyone if everyone can see that is everyone can see that yeah. Okay, uh, my topic is, yes, yes, the drama and the theater education digitalization in post pandemic. I mean, I mean, now in China is something like the post uh, pandemic because uh, the pandemic seems, seems past, but you know, it's still some, somebody uh, every day, they got some uh, person to get the new uh, numbers of the COVID-19. And uh, things. This our section is about uh, the you know the uh, su suspect, uh, successful practical uh, successful practice. So uh, I will give you I will give some cases in what happened now in China, in the arts area. Uh, you know uh, I know there's uh, there, t today there's so many. Uh, uh, professors from Brazil, from India, from Russia, and uh, they all talk about the technology and the educations and the universities uh, communications. Uh, but now I'm talking about a little bit narrow about the arts because this area now happened in China and the, uh, in the world is totally, I, I will use the word damaged some something like damage, like the, the like the theaters, because <clears throat> I heard about in in the I, I heard about in the U.S. the Broadway uh, was closing down until next year's at the end of next year, and I, I don't I don't know and if uh, later if the uh, uh, some uh, professors can can. Can tell uh, can tell me what what happened now in Russia? What what happened now in Brazil? What happened now in, in India? Because is for me is kind of damaged. And now and we are going to these kind of cases. Uh, during the pandemic in China now, I, I and uh, my colleague and uh, my friends they are we are using the uh, online uh, online applications. To, to to do some debate like academic debate talking about what happened in China now what happened now in the US about the theater things the play things the drama things and the 12 weeks we got 12 topics from uh, you know the, the first time the first time in at at, at the beginning it's just 800 people to watching us uh, to to watching us to talk about uh, uh, what is uh, happened now in uh, in 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 theaters things, 
but now you can you you can see on in the left uh, at, at the end we got more than one hundred thousand people watch, uh, watching us to join the debate. They are all the fans for the theaters, for the musicals, for the plays. So it is is higher than one hundred thousand uh, people uh, click rate. Uh, uh, join us. Uh, that this app is called the Ejibo. Is you know is a social net network applications. In the middle, there's now uh, there's what I'm doing that, and uh, we invited some of the directors, famous directors, famous actors and actresses, and the famous writers to talk about what kind of this uh, specific play what kind of this specific drama is and uh, what it used before and what is happening now. And on the, on the very right, we, we, can, we, can, we can see uh, there, there are some actors and actresses, they, they're doing a solo show online, you know, uh, just a little bit paragraph, like uh, to be or not to be Shakespeare things, you know, you know something like that. Uh, there are so many, so many people come to see it because they're famous. Yes, and also we invited some teachers and tutors to come to, 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 to talk about this, how hard we are. Then let's move, move on to the, the next. The next is this, this guy is called Luna, it's my friend and now he is a teacher in the Beijing, uh, Academy of Film, Beijing Film Academy. He is teaching the literature things, something like that. And it is a specific uh, classroom because it, this classroom, it was a real classroom, but now it's, it's online. But we think about, because these guys teaching very good and they, they, say, they say to the students something like, what is Chekhov? Why, why Chekhov is great? Why, you know, uh, in uh, Chekhov in Russia, in, in the whole world, why Shakespeare in the whole, uh, what, what is meaning of to be or not to be? And, uh, and uh, the students very uh, excited and the students say, hey, yes, yeah, good. But we are thinking why we don't take this classroom to the public, to the public, but now the the, now the problem is we, we can see the online drama and the theater education for professionals. There's, there's one thing we, we, we should think about it uh, like it. if we open to the public, it is some a little bit not fair for the other, uh, for the real students inside campus. And the, the other things is for literature lessons. If you talk about Chekhov, Shakespeare, it's okay. Why is great? Uh, how how does this meaning like uh, to be or not to be? But I am I am the, I am a directing uh, teacher as well. So it is very I, I think for me it's very hard for acting and uh, directing. You know, uh, it's it's about face to face to 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 act to how to act to to be or not to be, how the teacher, the teacher teach the student, act, acting students, how to, how to show that to be or not to be. It's very, very hard to do online. And the other things is since we are in the BRICS countries, we have so many communicate, we have so many communications, we have so many student exchanges programs like in my uh, in my school every year we send some acting and directing uh student to russia to moscow uh, to uh, saint petersburg to to learn to learn how to act to, to to learn how to direct and they send some they send some student to back to to our our country but in the pandemic time how how can we do that we 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 all do this online is it's not good 
online because you know something like and for stage design i i mean for the you know for the state design is is it totally not to do because they have to draw and they have to make some things and the teachers cannot teach them online like in just in on the screen so that is my problem that's my issues from that and uh, and also another thing is and this picture is is an online show is uh it's called beijing people's uh, art uh theater it's very famous it's like moscow it's like moscow uh, art you know uh, moscow art theater is is very famous this is in the pandemic time and uh, they are doing a show to celebrate this theater built uh, eight, uh, six, six, eight years, six, eight years. And then, and this click rate is very, very high. It's more than one million. Yes, the people enjoy that. But the, the real question is, I think for the, for the musical concert, if you do online, if you do uh, these applications, it's okay. But how about dance? How about drama? A dance, it may be okay, but the people still urge, people, people still want to, people very thirsty to, uh, to go to, uh, uh, to go inside the real theaters. So that is, that's for, for, for me nowadays, I'm, 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 I'm thinking of it because it's very hard, it's very hard time. And then the question that I want to ask is, is all the arts could be do it online, do it digitalization, like the painting maybe, yes, if you are a teacher of pen, if you are a teacher of painting, you can teach the the student how to draw, how to paint, but 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 how about dance? Can you educate people dance in online? Can you can you educate the people who want to learn the sculpture? Can you educate the people who want to learn for the architecture? It is it is it is a big question for me now, and. The, and the second question is the, the choice, because you know, in the digital time, you have so many choices, but the thing is who will provide it and who will receive it? Because it, it, is, it could be narrow. The student's knowledge could be narrow because the student, because everything do online, they just pick what they want, but not like the real campus, not like the real universities. They will give the big picture of knowledge, but uh, for digital time, but for for digital di digitalizations, I I I think there's sometimes the students' knowledge is is got to be narrow, narrow, narrow because they just pick what they want. So it's about the choice, and the last question is the future. Is is the real uh, education? digitalization is the real our future like we do vr we do ar we can do the ais and we can totally lose the campus or we can totally forget about that i i this, this is my questions and uh, uh i'm saying i'm saying now i'm saying to you and uh, and if some professors and uh, uh after the speech we can we can communicate that and uh, this is uh, my presentation, uh, my presentation, and uh, very thank you very much indeed. Thank you. We thank you very much for your ideas and, and for sharing them with us. Uh, we leave the question right now for the chat. So, so if anybody has a question, please write it down on the chat. And we'll proceed now with our South African representative, uh, Professor Judy Peter, Director of Internationalization from the University of Johannesburg. Uh, another very famous university when everybody who, who works with South Africa certainly works with University of Johannesburg. So please, Judy, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, are you able to see my screen? I'm seeing you right now. 
Are you, your screen is coming. You are now sharing your screen. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon uh, from the University of Johannesburg, and thank you for this opportunity to uh, present on behalf of my colleagues from the Division for Internationalization. Uh, so I've just put together a, a topic, online learning and virtual exchange, responding to strategies and approaches during COVID-19. Okay. I can see you, you are sharing your screen, but I can't see your slides. So I'm not sure if there is a technical issue. Just, just wanted to let you know that I can't see your slides. You, you can't see my slides? No, I can't. Okay. I don't see them. I think that was a bit of a problem because I could not see anyone's slides as well. Uh, you, I am you, sharing. Can you maybe proceed without uh, us seeing the slides? Uh, you send them afterwards? I, I think uh, the, the coordinator can share the slides. I've sent them as well. Is that possible? Um, Just a second. Yeah, thank you. just start to talk and uh, I'll try to okay. find your slides just okay so arguably innovation in global uh, collaborations exchange and research have been accelerated by five years during this year of the global pandemic I arrived at this assumption based on my observations during my participation in many global internationalization networks and platforms such as the Association of American Educators, European Association of International Education, and Times Higher Education. As a research methodology, leading theorist, for example, Robert O'Dodd, has published extensively on online learning, uh, uh, online intercultural exchange, and tele-collaborative exchanges since 2003. Another method includes collaborative online international learning called uh, COIL, which I'm sure you're all very familiar with. This is a, a model for embedding meaningful student uh, and international engagement into the curriculum. Uh, using internet-based tools uh, to link classrooms of universities abroad. The need to reimagine the internationalization of higher education has catapulted into dynamic spaces of critical interventions. The impact uh, of COVID-19 globally implies a new dispensation with remnants of historical practices that will assume a greater leaning towards virtual platforms and blended learning. Uh, are you able to find my slides? Uh, Not yet, really sorry. Uh, okay, so, <laughs> So I've uh, provided bullets uh, and I think the slides would have been easier to understand, but I'll proceed anyway. So some of the purposes for online learning is linked to student, ex uh, online learning, which is linked to student exchange, virtual student exchange, joint research collaborations and joint qualifications is to one, increase global competencies, increase global diversity and intercultural exchange increase national and international excellence stature and impact, increase the quality and impact on academic research and increase research networks. So what I've done now is I've provided two examples of, of online or, or virtual programs. The first one was our winter and summer school. The objective of the 2020 proposal was to pilot face-to-face uh, winter school for July 20, uh, June, July 2020. Given the global pandemic health crisis, the Division for Internationalization worked on migrating three short learning programs to an online platform. IO's role, or that is the Division for Internationalization's role, was to facilitate the migration of course content from modules to short learning programs and operational matters such as setting up new module codes online certification and application processes. These modules are relevant for our partners discursively in Africa, the Global North, Global South, Asia Pacific, 
and other areas within, within the BRICS uh, network. Since March 2020, uh, the division has been marketing the summer winter school with partners across the board. So I want to just draw your attention to a second uh, example of, of, of trying to engage on a virtual platform. UJ and the University of Maryland uh, are members of a, a research consortium. And since March 2020, we worked on a collaboration related to the idea of global classrooms. A brief context was provided by my, my uh, colleague at the University of Maryland, Dr. Veluka. Uh, at the time of COVID-19, Global Classroom, the Global Classroom Initiative at the University of Maryland was already a robust virtual exchange program, connecting students with international peers from 27 partner institutes in a, in a project-based virtual environment. Later this year, we receive a global class call from this university for the Faculty of Science at UJ on the topic, control of air pollution sources. So this rolled out in the following way. Number one, a collaborative student teams would a partner abroad on specific projects within a course, guest speaker sessions from faculty experts, collaborative teaching with a faculty member from a broad institute from abroad in institution, from a, a institution teaching a course with similar content allowing for students both from both institutions to engage in discussions and work together on projects. International guest lectures. If you have a, a faculties, a, 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 if you have a faculty in air pollution, uh, in or outside other engineering departments, they may be interested in collaborating on a few lectures, collaborative student discussions through Zoom and other platforms, student work on collaborative podcast projects exploring emerging pollutants that are currently uh, unregulated in the US and South Africa, allowing for the comparison between the two countries, supporting in uh, supporting connecting with local experts in Johannesburg who work in air pollution. And so am I able to click on this? Okay. I'm clicking so instead you, of you, so just uh, mm, tell me what yes. to do. Okay, so I'll just talk briefly to, if you can, okay. What I've included here is, is just uh, the example of the short learning programs that was part of the winter school. The first one was uh, African Insights. Next slide. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, artificial intelligence. And the last was one on UGEL, which is a language proficiency program. So I think you can get the next slide, please. Um, yeah, I, I speak about the project with the Maryland University on global classrooms. Next slide. Uh, next slide. Oh, no, it's okay. Oh, okay. Go up again, please. Uh, okay. So um, I, I think if you can just click up, please, just go up right to the top. Next slide. Okay, I, I, I think there seems to be a problem, it's okay. So what I've also done is I've highlighted two interactions that we've had around uh, online programs. The first one was on the AIEA platform on peer learning circles. The topics covered uh, related to virtual remote and online education. And some of the thinking was around virtual international internships and virtual exchange and study abroad programs, regulation around the delivery of remote and online education markets. Then the University of uh, Johannesburg hosted a webinar, which was called uh, in May, Reimagining a World After COVID-19. And these are some of the questions they posed around short, uh, I mean, online learning, which I think is important for us to just deliberate in terms of 
how we continue based on some of the unequal spaces that we work from. How will students learn? Will remote learning become more common? Will it sharpen inequalities or improve access to top quality teaching? What will be taught? The same stuff? Or will we need to get to the point in data rationed context, drive significant refinements? How will this effect differ at different levels of education? Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Professor Peter. Uh, thank you for all those insights and I think many of the ideas that you've been implementing at uh, JU could be, could be expanded among our universities, among the BRICS universities. We will now keep on with the topic of virtual mobility for last presentation from Russia, from HSE. Uh, I'm not sure, I think it's HSE Moscow. Uh, Dr. Ivan Prostakov, please, uh, Vice Rector for International Cooperation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nicolas. Uh, dear colleagues, it's a big pleasure to be here with you virtually, unfortunately, uh, and to share uh, our experience and to hear your experience, to hear from your countries what uh, happens now in the pandemic after or after pandemic uh, <clears throat> period. So I'm very happy and very glad to understand that we are on the same wavelength with uh, universities from different countries, from all BRICS uh, countries. And I would like to share shortly um, our experience in the field of uh, virtual mobility. Um, do you see the screen, the presentation? We do, we do, it's working oh, perfectly fine. fine. Um, so I'm a vice director of uh, HEC University. HEC means, or uh, previously, uh, the initial meaning was uh, um, High School of Economics. Uh, in fact, uh, we are now not a uh, specialized uh, university in economic and social sciences as, uh, at the beginning, but a comprehensive university of one of the biggest in Russia with more than 40,000 uh, students. And uh, as I said, I'd like to uh, share with you uh, our first experiences in this uh, field of uh, virtual mobility. And in fact, as uh, Professor um, Dubini said, uh, um, pandemic uh, offers uh, new opportunities that we may use. And uh, uh, academic and students' mobility is one of the main topic in our activities, in our international mobilities. Uh, what is interesting that uh, the first experience was uh, launched uh, before pandemic in our university, but by our uh, eight, um, St. Petersburg campus. We are present in four cities in Russia, in Moscow, St. Petersburg, and Nizhny Novgorod, and Volga, and Perm, and uh, the region of the Ural Mountains. So uh, our colleagues from St. Petersburg uh, two years ago created a so-called uh, bar camp platform in order to organize a common project between our students and uh, uh, business. And in January, there was a uh, first negotiation between HEC St. Petersburg and our French colleagues in order to launch a common project, a first virtual project uh, for business. Um, and uh, uh, by chance, or not by chance, uh, I don't know what kind of words that we may use here. Uh, in April, May, this project was realized completely online with a team of four Russian and four French students. Uh, their aim, main aim was to prepare for uh, L'Oreal, uh, based in Russia, L'Oreal Russia, uh, a report on their e-commerce strategy. It was, once again, a first experience in this field without pandemic, I, even an idea of what was pandemic could create in the future, but it was a very successful project and they will, it will continue to work on. Uh, you may see here how it was organized briefly. And uh, uh, we tried to uh, overcome also some challenges. The first one, because this kind of project work, it doesn't exist in many universities and not well uh, understood by companies, by business, because we use uh, mostly uh, to place uh, um, students on internship. The project work is a very short, very end uh, project of a small team of students and very, very practical one, because as I said, 
this was finally a report for a company how to work in e-commerce. Uh, the other um, project uh, on the online mobility we uh, could uh, organize this summer was a project of our summer university. Um, we uh, started to organize summer universities in our university some seven years ago. And uh, this year it was a pity to stop uh, this good tradition which attracted every year uh, between 150 and 200 uh, international students from several weeks in July, August normally. And we uh, received uh, uh, last year's students from all British countries. And last year, uh, by the way, also a group of uh, uh, Russian students from Far East Federal University. So it's a very exciting uh, experience for us and for uh, our students coming from different parts of the world. And we decided it was a big risk to completely shift our summer university uh, to the online format. And I would like to uh, congratulate my colleagues because it was a big success, big, not big enough as previously, but with more than 40 students from 12, 12 countries and uh, also a very interesting more, more than half of the students are from China. So in any case, it was a very exciting experience, a very good experience for uh, the present of our university, but also for the future of this project. We will not uh, continue in this way. We'll uh, go back to uh, the real uh, offline summer university. But uh, we see now that this project offers new opportunities, for example, for short international programs, not only in summer, but maybe also in winter and so on and so on. It's a very uh, good opportunity to, to be more creative. And uh, finally, what we are going to do now at the end of August, uh, uh, beginning of September, knowing that uh, many of our partners, uh, many of our partners, uh, mostly from Europe uh, uh, for our programs on uh, international mobility, um, decided to uh, cancel mobility programs in uh, this fall or even for the whole academic year. Uh, one, our partner from Edinburgh uh, decided to uh, shift to uh, virtual mobility. We decided also to try to, 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 to create a virtual mobility program for our international students, uh, including online courses, but also trying to create a, some kind of virtual immersion in the new uh, uh, academic and uh, cultural reality for our international students, in, including in this program, excursions towards uh, courses on Russian character and language, for example, courses of uh, Russian language in museums, uh, and also to combine uh, this mobility with uh, students' activities of our uh, students. Um, we perfectly understand that uh, on one hand, we have very good advantage for this kind of solution. Safety, obviously, with the COVID, uh, with the pandemic uh, situation. It's, uh, uh, as I said, quite much costless. Obviously, there are costs for uh, online programs and for online platforms. But in any case, and the, in the case of BRICS countries, it may be also a good solution uh, to avoid uh, uh, long and uh, expensive flights, to avoid also expenses in C2, because uh, for our countries, unfortunately, mobility is uh, quite often blocked by costs of uh, this mobility. Uh, and obviously, we uh, understand that there are very important disadvantages. First of all, the absence of face to face communication. Students, when they participate to programs of uh, mobility, international mobility, first of all, they'd like to, to find a new environment, new culture, new friends, and new language. Uh, it's impossible to uh, create this in the framework of uh, virtual mobility. Sometimes we have some technical limits and also uh, problems of time zones. Uh, in the case of uh, summer university, it was one of the big challenges because we received students from 
China, Indonesia, Brunei to Morocco, through Norwegia, uh, Italy, and uh, France. Uh, obviously, uh, we cannot offer all courses of our university to uh, students on online mobility. And obviously, what we see now, and probably you uh, see it in your countries, the virtual uh, environment for education, online education, uh, is not based on uh, very good rules and regulation. We have a big, important lack of rules and regulation in this field, and we have to work on it. So it is not a final solution for us, but uh, in any case, it's a good, good solution for extreme situation is in, which, in which we are now all. And in any case, we'll continue to work on uh, this uh, uh, virtual mobility because we find this uh, a very interesting uh, option to create new blended programs to uh, increase the mobility and to enlarge the geography of this mobility. And uh, I suppose for BRICS countries, it could be also a very interesting opportunity. Uh, to that, I would like also to invite all of you to um, obviously virtual uh, conference uh, that we organized with uh, uh, Coursera and many topics uh, we talked about uh, today will be uh, discussed uh, during this conference is uh, E-STARS, uh, as I said, organized with Coursera by our university for the third time. E-STARS means uh, e-learning stakeholders research uh, summit. Uh, it will be organized the first and second of uh, December. You may find information on uh, the website of our university. And uh, once again, I can invite you to participate at this uh, event. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Prostakov, for this uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, we have now completed the series of, of presentations. So I thank everybody for, for their attention. Uh, unfortunately, Professor Anisimov had to leave, so he won't be able to conclude uh, these two seminaries. We've already taken a joint photo, so we, we don't have this requirement anymore. So I, I'd like to give a few words to try to summarize what we've seen specifically during this second hour, then we maybe can spare two or three minutes to exchange a few extra ideas and that will be it. So to, to, to conclude in an attempt to summarize uh, the, the presentations, I think what, what's been very clear for me, coming back to the different stages in, uh, in, when we react to a stressful situation is that our countries, our universities are in different stages regarding COVID and, and the virtualization of communication. Uh, in Brazil, the two Brazilian institutions have clearly shown, and those before them in the first hour also, that we are still very much in a, in a, in a phase to react to the, to the pandemic and to, to provide some direct solutions to our communities. In other countries, in China, in Russia, in India, uh, we've seen clearly in South Africa as well that you're, you're, you're maybe in a, in a more advanced stage of the reaction, uh, thinking about deep transformations in our university and in the way we work, both for scientific topics. We've had a good example in computing uh, with, uh, with uh, MPTI, MIPT, sorry or in arts, as we've seen uh, with example uh, come from China. Uh, in all circumstances, my feeling is that virtual mobility, virtual exchange, either for specific activities such as summer schools, and we've had great examples, or maybe, sorry, maybe for some specific activities regarding uh, interculturality, uh, so teaching about the Chinese culture, about the Russian culture, or some even more specific... Sorry, I've had some noise here. Or even some more specific scientific activities regarding the teaching of a specific skill. Well, this kind of virtual activities uh, among BRICS University could be and probably are the, the perfect answer that we have to provide now both because of COVID and also as a means to 
to turn our associations more concrete and to, to have some concrete activities inside the BRICS League, inside the BRICS Network Universities. Uh, someone has mentioned the first talks, double degrees, where well, at least if we have some shared virtual training and virtual uh, uh, teaching, it will be one step towards uh, joint degrees or double degrees or, or some more joint activities. So that would be my synthesis of two more of this morning's uh, presentations. And uh, we are already past uh, the official time to finish. Uh, I think we are 15 minutes late, but if someone or, or some colleagues want a few minutes to, to share ideas, I think we can still give us this time. So please, if anybody has something to, to mention or to ask or to, to say to, to finish what, what has already been said, feel welcome. I would like to say a few words. So we have been seeing all of your artificial intelligence, the go the digital marketing, but we have lost, we didn't discuss about the simulators role. Now, and today's era, the simulators are a very important role. You can give a small videos, you can make, we give teaching the online, they can send the small videos. They can really just learn from them. And they can, whenever they get the real exposure of the patients or the real exposure in their particular lives, they can have the advantage from them. So I just want to, can we have a small role of simulators to be there? And we can exchange the ideas about the simulator. We are developing the algorithms day by day. We are making the new algorithm. We are updating them. We can discuss with them. We can share across the universities. We can make them for whatever we feel like. Though I think this role of simulators is also very important for them. What Thank you, Lalit. Anyone else would have something else to add? Uh, I want to, to share some other ideas. May I? Of course, of course please. Um, I, I was very pleased to watch all presentations. I'm glad to say that we are improving our uh, cooperation with other countries, as I pointed in my presentation. Uh, last week, we had a meeting with a lot of professors from Hebei University from China. Uh, we are launching our Confucius Institute. So um, in a way that COVID-19 um, stopped our plans to do it face to face in our university, it also increased our cooperation online. So it is in the way that we were talking lately so uh, i think the federal university of Goiás is open to strengthen the comparison with all of you with BRICS universities too and saying that i finish here thank you very much thank you guys okay well if nobody has uh, anything to add anymore i think we can conclude for today uh, I thank everybody again for their participation, lots of ideas. Uh, the organization will work on and see for this and will keep on by email and uh, well, we'll certainly have other opportunities to meet again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Have a thank great you. day Bye -bye. or a great night. Thank you, thank you everybody. It was great session you, and a wonderful round table. Thank you, Nicholas, for wonderful moderation of the second one. And, uh, Thank you, so, but if you have something that you've forgotten to tell us today, uh, please uh, send all your recommendations. We're still working on the final draft, so uh, there's still time if, if, you're, or if you're timid, for example. Thank you again. Thank you and goodbye. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.